Hey, what's going on guys? I just want to make a very quick video about file attributes, uh, specifically the 12 mode bits that are stored together with the four bits of file type information for each file on your file system. We're going to talk specifically about the permission bits right now, and there's nine of them. If you've been wondering in the other videos what all this crazy stuff stands for, we've covered this is the file type, so whether it's a link, a block device, a directory, a normal file, etc. But I've left these as a mystery. Now, if you want to know the nitty gritty, I'm not going to cover it here, so we're not going to talk about octal or binary representation. This is sort of a sugar coating of the reality of it. Read, write, execute. The fairly simplistic Unix permissions model, which Linux has inherited, consists really of just those three types of permissions for three different types of user. So this would be the owner. You'll see RWX. Our owner can read, write, and execute. In this case, it's a directory, so this would apply to the files inside of the directory. The owner's group can also read, not write, and execute. And everyone else, other, can read, not write, and execute. So even if you're not part of the Dave group, you can still read and execute the files inside of this user's music directory, for example. Now, on an actual file, you'll see these are directories, and this is the only actual file in this home directory. You can see the owner can read and write. This is not an executable file. The owner's group, in this case, also the group Dave, so this is the owner, the group, can read. So if you're in the Dave group, you can read. If you're Dave himself or herself, you can read and write. And if you're another user in some other group, you can still read this file. It's a little weird the way these are set by default. So let's go into the desktop folder and do another long listing. That's list-l. And you can see it's basically the same thing here. The owner, Dave, this first bit is the file type. Then comes come the three owner bits, then the three group bits, and then the three other bits. Again, so Dave, the owner, can read and write. Anyone in the group, Dave, can read and write. And all others can read. It's a little bit weird. If, uh, if a new file that you create, for example, uh, oops, oh god, sorry about that, it's early in the morning. So new files I create are automatically created as readable by others. I don't entirely like this. So what's an admin to do? Well, we can change the file mode, chmod, and we need to set some new permissions. This is really tough without doing binary or octal notation, but we're going to do it anyway here. So basically, you have three bits. We're going to say 7 is read, write, execute. 6 is read, write. 5 is read, execute. 4 is just read. 3 is write and execute. It's a little bit strange. You'll rarely see that. 2 is just write. 1 is just execute. And 0 is no writes at all. So you're primarily going to be dealing with 7, 6, 4, 0, primarily. So that would be full writes, 7, everything you got. 6, just read and write, no execute. 4, just read. And 0, no writes at all. Okay, so again, we've got owner, group, everyone else. If we set file or directory to 777, then the first bit says, this owner can do anything he wants to the file or directory, and it's containing the files it contains. The owner's group can do anything, and everyone else can too. This is like the very least secure setting. You're basically just turning security off with little security there is in the traditional security model. So generally, you'll see something like 750. If you don't need exec permissions, it'll be like 640. 740. So what does this mean? This means owner everything, or owner read and write. Group read. So the owner can do basically what he wants, except for setting it executable. The group can read, and everyone else doesn't have any rights. So 
If I set this on new file, let's list again, and you can see the owner can read and write, group can only read, and everyone else doesn't have anything. I hope this is sort of making sense. This is a topic where it's very easy to get into binary and octal notation, so ones and zeros, but I don't think that's the best way to do an intro to this because yes, to fully understand this, to have this really click, you need to understand how this is represented to your operating system, which is just a bunch of ones and zeros that are then made into these nice readable triplets. But I want you to just have an overview of how this works and what you're really looking at at a simplified level. So owner, group, everybody else. chmod is the command that changes the file mode, so you can change this for a file like we just did. And in very simplified terms, you can find tables for this online. You can just search for like a chmod table or something. And then you can say, no, I want to change these. I want owner, group, everyone else to have different rights. And you change it. Again, there's calculators and tables for this online until you really want to get to the nitty gritty and understand the binary or octal notation. And you can change it as we just did, right? So what we just took away was write permissions. This would have been 664. That was the original mode of the file. We just changed it to 640, which is read, write, read, nothing. So what if one fine day you say to yourself, geez, I really don't think hand editing file permissions is all that splendid. I'd like to have it done automatically. I never ever want to have a user create a file that's readable by another user because that is sort of a strange default to have. Well, that's just dandy. There is a way to do that, but to really understand what you're doing with this, it does require that you understand binary notation, how this is really represented to the machine. However, I am going to show you where to edit that. And that would be in, uh, we won't be able to save anything we do here, so um, etc login defs. Uh, that's in Debian-based systems, so that'll be Ubuntu Mint Debian. Login defs. If you search for umask, user mask, you'll find it here. The umask is essentially a mask that's put on file permissions. The way this is calculated is basically the umask is the same, follows the same table of permissions that I'll show you. So like I was saying, you know, zero is nothing, one is execute, two is write, three is write and execute, etc., etc. It follows the same table, but this defines what you take away. So some file or, well, shell process really says, hey, create a new file, and it goes, yeah, you know, what permissions do you want? Usually it'll be all permissions that you've got, please. And UMask is the permissions that you subtract away from that. So this is basically like sort of a reverse permissions table applied to the normal one. But basically you can just think of it as, as it's taking away these permissions. So owner, owner's group, other, right? The owner, what are we taking away? Nothing. Owner's group, what are we taking away? Two, what's that? Well, in binary, it's zero, one, zero that the permissions it represents are right. So owner, we don't take anything away. The owner's group doesn't get write permissions. What does that leave? Read and execute. And everybody else, we do the same thing. We leave, read, and execute. That is, we are removing two, zero, one, zero, which represents write permissions. Okay, but we're getting into slightly deeper territory than I wanted. I want this to just be a very shallow overview of you don't need to know binary or octal because this is one of those threads that when, once you start unrolling it, you, you are suddenly learning seven new things to understand just what these damn RWXs are at the beginning of a long listing of files or directories. And I don't want that. So we'll dive a little bit deeper in the future, but right now, just remember when you list, these are basically, this is what kind of file this is. This is the permissions that the owner has. This is the permission that the owner's group has. These are the permissions that others have. You can modify this by saying change the file mode to whatever, and then the file. If you're working on a directory, you can say just change the 
permissions on the directory itself, or you can recursively. So that's for the directory and everything inside of it, including all directories and files, infinitely all the way down to the last turtle. So there you go. Uh, the other one is uh, obviously you need to be flexible in, okay, this is to change what group we're talking about here or what owner. You might leave the same permissions, but if you change the owner, Dave will no longer be able to access it and some other owner will. So you can change owner to whatever owner in whatever group. So that, you know, in this case, I wouldn't be changing it if I said Dave, Dave, and then the directory name. So there you go. Now you can change the file mode, change the file's owner or directory's owner. And I hope these permissions at a very basic level again kind of make sense. All right, my little home slices. I'll see you in the next video.